story. Uh, this is a true story. It's published in this book, um, A Christmas Housewarming by Peachtree Press uh, to benefit Habitat for Humanity. It's Georgians Remembering Christmas. And my particular story is called The Three Wise Women. As a five-year-old Birmingham boy in 1955, I thought, as far as Christmas goes, I have seen it all. Had my witness moving reindeer, snowmen, and Dickensian shoppers in the downtown Loveman's department store window. That electrical miracle and decorating spectacle was in itself our period's special effect, equivalent in shock value to the Terminator oozing back and forth from liquid to flush. I had also sat on the lap of Santa Claus himself, gazed out the rear window of our car for hours as my parents drove my brother and me through the glittering and gaudy colored outdoor light competitions erected in subdivision after endless subdivision. Witness my family consumed for holiday dinner would look to be the entire produce, poultry, and bakery section of the Piggly Wiggly store. Received the most lusted after gun and holster set. And finally, I had been allowed to stay up as late as I pleased to watch the likes of Danny Kaye, Bob Hope, and Lawrence Welk entertain along Christmas themes through our brand new, and it seemed, 5,000 pound television set. <laughs> I hadn't even begun school, and I was already burned out over the event schedule to mark the birth of Christ. Therefore, when my parents told me we were going this Christmas to spend the day with my three great aunts in Bessemer, I was more than disappointed. I was grim. Does Bessemer even have electricity? <coughs> the youngest of the ants was in her 70s. How much food could they cook? How could they conceive, much less afford, a present even close to my child's masculine tastes? Fortunately for me, in that era, I could not dialogue with my parents on a first-name basis to discuss options. <laughs> if I had, I might have missed one of my great Christmas presents. Mary Alice and Rutherford Key may have leaned towards spoiling me, but they did know when it was time to shut up, get in the car, and go. It was just that way I was whisked off literally to the other side of the tracks to be put before Aunt Patsy, Aunt Judith, and Aunt Sarah for a whole day. I fell asleep on the hour journey. Today it probably takes 12 minutes. And when I awoke, this is what I saw. An enormous house, not suburban and low ceiling like ours, but with multiple stories and tall walls and windows, treacherously high steps to the front doors, flocks of birds fluttering and cooing and flying, and ferns that look large enough to feed a Veronosaurus. Then they appeared at the top of the stairs. The ants coming to greet us. They moved as though choreographed. They weren't speaking as much as they were singing, lilting, cooing, like the birds. Were those crowns on their heads? Oh, Tommy, so this is our top Merry Christmas, darling. We love you so much. You are so handsome, just like your sweet daddy come in. Do you, do you know how much we love you? This is the way it went all day. Words of adoration, moist cakes, hugs of encouragement, chunks of fudgy chocolate, wise and quick smiles, juicy turkey, contented silences. All came effortlessly to my family and me. Why this intoxicating good cheer? Had I made all A's, mowed lawns, or read through the complete Bible? No. Christmas and showing up were the only evident requirements for basking in this day of affection. 25 years later, as a break from graduate school studies, I took a trip back to look at the aunt's old house. They had died by the time I finished high school. It was a shock how different the home looked that winter. The steps were crumbling. The birds were just dirty pigeons in legion. The ferns were kudzu. 
The crowns on their heads must have been poor dye jobs, leaving the hair purple or pink. On that cold December day, I realized how poor these women had been. And yet of all my relations, they were able to afford my most expensive and enduring Christmas present, undeserved, extravagant attention. If I have ever felt the capacity to be generous, charitable, or keep the Christmas spirit throughout the year? Isn't it because others like the ants first gave these treasures to me? At five, I had not seen it all. Indeed, all the trappings of Christmas became forever opaque in the glaring vision of those three ants, not from the east, or bearing gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but from Bessemer, bearing love. Merry Christmas.